Mango Math presents Factorland, a pre-algebra game. Factorland is a pre-algebra game that follows the following standard, which is students will apply properties of operation as strategies to add, subtract factors, and expand their linear expressions with rational coefficients. Factorland has some math terms to help increase understanding, which is factor, a whole number that divides evenly into another number. Greatest common factor is the largest number that will divide two other numbers exactly. Variable, a letter or symbol representing a quantity. Expression, a group of numbers, variables, and operators, uh, excluding an equal sign. The supplies that come in the pouch along with your information sheet and guide will be a Factorland game board, a deck of Mango math cards, which you'll notice uh, do not have face cards. Instead, they have zeros, 11s, and 12s, and they have mango colored hearts and diamonds. But other than that, it's a regular deck of cards. They also have pawns that they'll move along the game board. So you could have up to four kids playing this game at one time. As you'll see on this game board, there's a number of expressions that are on each square. The object of the game is to work your way from the start to the finish and be the first one to get to the finish. In order to do that, students will draw cards from the, from the deck of cards. And based on what they draw that card to be, and I have a five here, I have to figure out what expression has the greatest common factor of five. So if I look at the game board and I, at the start, I start going through each square to see which one has a greatest common factor of five. And I will see that 10t plus 25, greatest common factor is five. If I take five out of both numbers, I'm left with 2t plus five. So I'm going to move my pawn to that location because I've factored out the five. Then it's the next player's turn, and let's say they drew an eight. They are going to go from start, looking at each expression to see which one has the greatest common factor of eight. And they will see that there's a square that says eight X plus 16. If I factor out the eight, I'm left with X plus two. So I can move my pawn to that location. Now there's a different rules for different cards. So for example, I have, if I draw a one and I, there are no factors of one. So those are then represented as a, um, a variable. So they will represent a variable that has to be removed. So if you're looking at where I'm on the board, I'll be the red player. I look to see which one has the greatest common factor being a variable. And I'll see 4x minus 15x. Well, there isn't any greatest common factor to be a number to be taken out of that, but I can take a variable, the x, out. So I'm going to move my, do you see with the square on it there? I'm going to move my pawn to that spot. And that's where I'm going to stay for that round. Now, if I draw a 0, 10, 11, or 12 card, players will move their pawn to that number. It's on a bright yellow star. And it doesn't matter if the number is in front of me or behind me, I have to move to that number. So if I'm a player red with that giant red pawn, and I draw a zero, I have to go all the way back to that zero star. So I'm going to lose a lot of ground and have to go all the way back to that star. But let's say I'm the purple pawn and I draw a 12. I get to move my pawn from where it's at all the way over to the 12. So I have gained ground in that instance. This adds a little bit of uh, fun to and chance to the game. Um, just like in the game Candyland, where you have to move backwards based on the cards that you draw. This is kind of under the same idea. So let's say you draw a card that has the suit of diamonds on it. I have an eight of diamonds here. That means I can move my card 
two places, meaning I'm going to find a factor of eight on two in two locations, and I can be on this last one. So if I look at the game board, I have the purple pawn actually on 8x plus 16, where 8 is a factor, so I can move my red one there, and then the next expression that I can move to will be the 16n minus 40. If I factor out the um, 8 out of that one, I'm left with 2n minus 5. So I get to move my pawn to that location. So at any card that's a diamond, you get to move two factors. Now, once I get close to the finish line, I have to get, a, I have three different expressions to choose from, and I have to draw a number that fits only one of those three um, expressions. So if I draw the three of hearts, I know that 9t minus 15, the greatest common factor is the 3, and it will be left with 3t minus 5. I can then move my red pawn to that space, and I finish the game, and I win. So there's different means of how you travel on the board. The last one, you can have three uh, different opportunities uh, to get the right answer and move into that space. Some guided questions to help promote critical thinking is what does the greatest common factor mean? Can you factor out a variable? How does this happen? And is it possible to factor out more than one number or variable? So uh, making sure that they know in this game it has to be the greatest common factor. And that might help them with understanding that question. So it's a great game. The students love doing it. It's going to remind them of the kids game Candyland because of the moving forward and backwards and they'll enjoy it.